Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Book of Heiress Jacqueline. I am Dr. Jacqueline Lawrence, and it is such a pleasure to have you here. I am going to ask that you would kindly like this video if you happen to like it, and hit subscribe so you can be notified of uh, any uh, future videos of mine. Uh, for those who do not know me, my name is Dr. Jacqueline Lawrence. I hail from uh, Santa Rosa, California. I'm a 60-year-old grandmother of 10 and a uh, doctor of Christian counseling, author, uh, entrepreneur, and uh, whatever else I tend to want to get my hands into. So I am just here to talk about a particular subject today that's been on my mind probably all my life uh, to some degree or another. Um, and uh, the topic for today's discussion is faith in the body, not the booty. Faith in the body, not the booty. So um, I don't know uh, how many of especially women have been insecure about their bodies. I know I've always been insecure about my body. As a matter of fact, mostly my booty. Uh, growing up, I didn't even want to go to the store by myself. I didn't want to be seen by myself. I didn't want nobody looking at my booty because it was always flat and not shaped right, you know. Um, so I was always very insecure of my booty. And that's why this um, topic resonates with me. Not only for that reason, but also I am so disheartened by women who uh, find only their faith and their confidence in their booty. It's like their booty is used as a weapon or a tool, a weapon to make other people jealous. I mean, they make they take these side poses to see how far booties can stick out and they always have to show their booty. It's always about their booty, their breasts, you know, their uh, hips, uh, their thighs, uh, their small waist, their shapes in general, okay? Um, as if that's all they have going on for them. So those are the two main reasons that bring me here today. Um, I want to talk about women's shapes, okay? Uh, women, we're known for our shapes, let's face it. The, the One of the things that separate a woman from a man, um, uh, besides the genitals, is the body shape. Women uh, typically are known for their more hourglass figures, you know, the smaller waist, uh, the larger breasts and uh, hips and booties and thighs. Uh, so the top portion and the bottom portion being about the same and about 10 inches larger than the stomach area would make that considered to be what is considered an hourglass figure, or as the Commodores would say, ow, she's a brick house. So that would be like what is considered a brick house. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, let's face it. All of us women, although we have the genitals of the women with who are brick houses, uh, we're not all shaped like brick houses. Uh, some are rectangular, some are pear-shaped, um, you know, smaller at the top, bigger at the bottom. Some are heart-shaped, bigger at the top and smaller at the bottom. Some are more rectangular, just kind of straight up and down. Some are like apple, kind of like just round all over. Uh, some are somewhere in between, um, but we're all shaped differently. Um, I'm a plus size model and a new term came out for plus size models and it was called curvy. Well, guess what? I no longer felt included because I was a plus size, but I wasn't this newfound new shape that they traded size in for shape. I, w I wasn't no curvy figure, so I always felt left out in that arena. I mean, I'm, I was plus size, but I, I just wasn't curvy. Um, let's face it, women, most of us are 
no matter whether we're curvy or not curvy, hourglass or straight up and down, most of us just aren't satisfied with our bodies or our body shapes in general. However, for some reason, we some, some people do perpetrate as though they are, and some people are uh, overly, in my opinion, um, like boastful about their bodies and their shapes. Uh, Numbers 522 talks about uh, an unfaithful wife test. And if you read Numbers 5, it talks about this test that they put women through to determine who is faithful and who is not faithful. They drink this water and if the water causes their belly to swell according to uh, numbers five and 22, and their thigh to rot, then they are considered unfaithful women. Now, in my mind, a swollen belly and rotten thighs kind of takes away that hourglass figure, that thing that women are known for, the swollen belly, instead of the belly going in, it now goes out. And the thighs to rot, instead of the thighs going out, now they are rotting and they may go up and down. The, the, this is a curse of unfaith, the unfaithful wife. And the curse is they've been basically stripped of their womanhood. God has mocked them and now they're belly instead of going in it goes out and now their thighs instead of going out they go in these women are cursed guess what my grandmother my great grandmother okay she she had a swollen belly and um rotten in thighs and my grandmother and and my mom and, and me and diabetes runs in our family, and we're, we've been carrying the evidence of this curse throughout the generations. And in all honesty, I've been praying, praying, praying that God would take this curse away from, from me, my family, and the generations to come. Uh, not just... Uh, the physical curse of having our bodies transform, but the, most of all, the spiritual curse, this curse of unfaithfulness. Yes, your girl has been unfaithful. And guess what? I know of other women in my family who have been unfaithful. In fact, probably all of the women in my family have been unfaithful. And as quiet as it's kept, Probably a lot of the women in your family have been unfaithful. God just haven't cursed you with the evidence of unfaithfulness. So thank God that you haven't been cursed with the evidence of unfaithfulness. However, uh, in the spirit, we all know that the wages of sin is death. Did you know God is a jealous God and he doesn't want you using your body to brag about how good he's been to you? He wants to get the glory in your big hips, your big behind. He wants to get the glory in that nice firm round behind. He wants to get the glory in your small waist, in your curvy shape, in the beautiful womanhood that he made. He wants to get the glory. He don't want you to have the glory. He said uh, he wants you to honor your body as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto him. He doesn't want you using your body as a tool to manipulate, to use, to make lustful, to seduce like a Jezebel. He wants you to use your body for his glory, honoring it as a living sacrifice. So, um, 
Romans 12, 1 through 8. I want you to hear this. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve. Just like there was that test, you test for yourself. There was the test of the unfaithful wife, you test for yourself. You test and, and, and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. Because you got a big booty. Because you got a fine shape. Because you can use your body and make your body move to make a man give in to you. And make him be lustful. You can make a man leave his wife over your fine self. Okay? Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. But rather think of yourself with sober judgment. In accordance with the faith God has distributed each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members. Okay? We're talking about bodies. Now he's telling you about the one body with many members. And these members do not all have the same function. Just like we ain't all going to have a big booty. Okay? So in Christ, we, though many, form one body. Instead of you thinking about your body, think about the body. Okay? That's what we're here for. And each member belongs to all all the others. We're one body. That's where your focus should be on the body, not your body, and certainly not your booty. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it's serving, then serve. If teaching, then teach. If it's encouraging, go ahead on and encourage. If it's teaching, then teach. If it's encouraged, then give encouragement, giving generously. If it is to let, be led, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. God wants you to trust in your position as a member of his beautiful body. He doesn't want you focusing on your body. Okay? Okay? He doesn't want you focusing on how much you can suck your stomach in when you turn to the side and take your picture. He doesn't want you focusing on how arched your back looks or how big your booty is, uh, how many more Brazilian butt lifts you need and, and, and all that. And, and, and how you're, Dress hugs every curve you got to show and how you going to show your cleavage and then put a blingy blingy pin there for everybody to look and say, here I am. This is what I got. Don't you see my titties? God don't want you going around doing that. Okay, so let it go. Instead of focusing, it's good that you honor God with your body by taking care of the beautiful body that he gave you, by eating lots of fruits and vegetables and drinking lots of water and exercising and doing all that. That's wonderful. Keep it up, okay? But let your main focus. Don't be so insecure that all your faith is in your body and in your booty, and not the body. That's it. Thank you so much for tuning in to the book of Heirs Jacqueline. And I have some uh, things coming up. I got to give you guys some updates because some things are going on. And you guys are on this journey with me. And I, I'm going to keep it real with y'all, okay, about what's going on in my life. I'm just going to keep it real because that's what this uh, channel does. And so... Tune in for some real updates, and uh, I'll talk to you all soon, okay? Love you. Bye-bye.